I've known Mez for about 12 years now, but only really spoken to her in the past three to four. I was a fair bit cooler than she was in high school. <clears throat> and by cooler, I actually mean two years older. So talking to her back then was almost certainly forbidden. I did, of course, know exactly who she was and what outfit she was wearing to any socials or sporting events around the school. It's not creepy, we're married now. I don't have many regrets in life, but not having the courage to become your friend back then would have to rank pretty high. If I'd known then what I know now about what I know about you now, I would not have hesitated. You're the most well-balanced person I've ever met. You're a strong, proud, and independent woman. Yet you're still soft caring and loving at all the right times. You have a great sense of humour, even though you deny it, you give as good as you get. You keep me grounded, you keep me warm, regrettably also in the summertime. You bring joy into my life and you love me for who I am. You make me want to become a better person for you. promise that I will not steal the batteries from your toothbrush when mine is getting flat. I cannot promise that you will not be on the receiving end of my endless jokes and wry humour. But what I can promise is that I will be by your side for the rest of your life. I will be there when we buy our block of land. I will be there when we have our children. I will be there in challenging times when it may be easier to be somewhere else. I will always strive to get enough sleep and eat enough food so that you don't have to be around me when I'm grumpy. <laughs> I have nothing but love and admiration for the person you are and ask nothing of you other than to be yourself. I look forward to growing old with you and sharing all the highs and lows that we have ahead of us. I love you. I say these vows not as promises, but as privileges. Because <laughs> I have the privilege of loving you every single day. <laughs> Here, in front of everyone we love, I give you everything that I am. Chad, I will love you, hold you, and honour you. I respect you, encourage you, and cherish you. I vow above all else to live in truth with you and to communicate fully and fearlessly. I promise, I promise I will always be honest with you, kind, patient and forgiving. I promise to try and use my inside voice after 8.30pm <laughs> and to feed you before you get hungry. I promise to be faithful and supportive and to always make our family's love and happiness my priority. I will be yours in plenty and in want, in sickness and in health, in failure and in triumph. I will dream with you, celebrate with you, and walk beside you through whatever our lives may bring. You are my soulmate, the love of my life, and my whole future. Today and always, I love you. Cool. <laughs> oh.
not expecting the husband to wear a high halo or the wife to have the wings of an angel. It's not looking for perfection in each other. It's cultivating flexibility, patience, understanding, and a sense of humor. It's having the capacity to forgive and forget. It's a common search for the good and the beautiful. It's establishing a relationship in which the independence is equal, dependence is mutual, and the obligation is reciprocal. It's not only marrying the right partner, it's being the right partner. Chad and Marianne, today you've received the blessing of your family and friends. You've made vows and you've exchanged rings. Only one step remains. By the power vested in me by the Commonwealth of Australia, I now pronounce you man and wife, and you may kiss the bride. that has stuck with me is Mez's sayings. She picks up on quirky, wise old quotes and uses them in everyday life. And this particular one drove me the most insane. And she made this one up herself. Mez got into the habit of saying 100% as a substitute for an answer that one would normally just respond yes to. I had to start pulling her up because I couldn't deal with the enormity of a 100% commitment to her solid answers to everything. Mez, would you like a coffee? 100%. Mez, should we go out tonight? 100%. Mez, should we pay $300 for concert tickets? Oh, 100%. At least she always manages to make me laugh. When Chad moved the Bathurst, I asked him if there was anyone there that we would both know just out of curiosity. He rattled off a couple of names which included Mary Ann Ferguson. One day I get a text message saying he had some mesmerising news to tell me. I immediately replied, you've got together with Mez, haven't you? He was shocked that I'd worked it out, which shows two things. That his pun game isn't very good, although looking around at all the puns on the signs, yeah, you've met somebody that loves puns too, so. But also that he'd forgotten how much in the last six months that in every conversation we had had, Mez's name somehow worked its way into the conversation. Probably subconsciously, but I heard it all the time. 